Hello everybody. Well, I've got a recording here going to show you how to give piano lessons long distance using either Skype or preferably Hangouts on Air, which has far, far better audio, as I'll demonstrate later. This will be a little bit of a long video because I am going to include the Hangouts on Air lesson at the end of this one. But initially we just want to get the set up going with voice meter and a host um, using Cantabile which is a tremendous host for doing live performance and very lightweight very very solid cannot recommend it highly enough and even the free version is quite impressive what we're going to be doing is setting up voice meter here as the ASIO device for the host. And you can use a DAW, you could use anything else that will host your VST instruments. Um, let's go right over to Tools and Options here, however you access your setup. And you'll notice from the drop-down list, Voice Meter shows up as an ASIO device. And we're going to choose the one that just simply says Voice Meter Virtual ASIO. Okay? and 44 decent buffer size for performance and then audio ports down here at the bottom I have the output to speakers main set up just to the VIO1 and VAIO2 and what those are are simply these inputs right here this slider and a good idea to do in voice meter is to right click and label it right away. There you go. Actually, uh, it's a little bit limited in number of letters, so I'll just say can't of all. Okay. And this is going to be on this side. Is going to be from from Skype. So I'll say from Skype or the H Hangout on Air. So I'll say Skype slash HOA. So now that it's labeled and I won't have confusion about where my inputs are coming from on which side. Now mind you, these are inputs. These are the sound coming from these. We're also going to be sending sound out to Skype in the HOA using these B buttons here. Now pay no attention to the A buttons that I have lit up here. Those are just to get my audio out to the second computer that I'm actually recording this all on. And if I turn it off, you'll hear nothing. There you go. So as you can see, it kind of went blank. Okay, now an important consideration when you're sending Skype stuff out is that this B1 here, and also the Hangout on Air, uh, the codex or the compressor does not handle high peaks very well. Now this isn't as much of an issue on Skype or on Hangouts on Air if you're in voice mode. But if you're using studio mode, as I'm going to be doing, you might want to right click on the slider, type in minus 12, because you don't want your peaks going over minus 12. Okay? For now I'm just going to leave it at zero until I do the Hangout on, it, uh, on Air demo. As you can see I've got piano is audible and it will be audible to the Skype caller and you'll be able to hear them talk and hear them play also especially if they're using uh, the same kind of setup. There's going to be a file present in the um, description that you can download that has the settings already in it even with the labeling. In fact I'm going to put as you see I already put microphone <laughs> over here instead of hardware input one so it says mic also I've gone ahead and made it so that it's it's an ASIO input I have made it so that one and one is are both going to here to make it mono however if you don't have that utility simply click the mono button down here and since I already have it set to mono this is kind of a little redundant and so it got louder because I was 
taking what's already two inputs and mixing them to two inputs. So anyway, we, uh, I do that as in the system settings. And you see, I set this patch ASIO inputs to strips, and I have one and one instead of one and two. I have one and one both going to that strip. Okay, so let's walk through this. We have Cantabile with the Cantabile with the piano coming through, and it's going to B1. It's going to go out to Skype. My microphone is coming in B1, and that's going out to Skype. Think of B as broadcast. Think of A as audition. You'll notice I'm not auditioning here. I'm just using this to send to the recording. So like I said, ignore these A2s. But the A1 is essential for auditioning or monitoring. And that's being sent out to whatever your device is that you've selected here as your A1 device. If you've got an ASIO device, go to the bottom and select the ASIO device and voice meter will adopt the buffer settings and faster speeds, better latency that that uh, device offers. So that's always the way to go if you've already got a good ASIO device interface plugged into your computer. Select the ASIO device and you're off to go. Okay, so my A1's here. I'm monitoring the piano on this. I'm monitoring it and I'm sending it out to Skype or the Hangout. On this end, I'm monitoring the caller coming in, the Skype person, or the Hangout on air. And I'm monitoring them. But you notice I am not sending them back out to themselves. So this is turned off. You don't want to broadcast what they're saying and send it right back out to them so they'll hear an echo. Okay, let's get a little drink of water here and I'll continue the rest. Now for piano lessons I recommend that if you have the capability to open up your VST and set the dynamic range lower. so that it's always a little bit louder, more of a consistent volume. This is especially useful because the compressors on Skype are pretty terrible, as you're going to hear in a second. Now for the Skype setup, let me close that. Here's Skype. And you'll want to have the speakers set to the aux fio. The aux, notice that. This side is the voice meter aux, and that's where you're bringing in the Skype. So your speakers are there, and you test your audio, make sure it's working. And you'll see the meters did work here. So let's just do that again so you can actually see the meter run. And there you have your meters running. Okay? And then your microphone is set just to regular voice meter output, VAIO. Now, this is set up because Skype is not a ASIO thing. This is set up in the Windows audio control panel, okay? Which you get to by right clicking on your little speaker and selecting playback devices or recording devices. All right, so notice it just says speakers. It's not necessarily very helpful. I usually rename it voice meter VIO. And that refers to slider. And since I'm using voice meter banana, voice meter aux VIO. Well now, I know what the heck I'm talking about here, okay? Uh, which slider is each one of these refers to. So these are the playbacks. They're playing back into these sliders. All right. So I have, can't, I could even label this can't have play if I wanted to. But that's the voice meter BAO, that one. And that's what I have selected 
by right clicking as the as the default device, which I would say like set as default device. Okay, so it's already set as default device. Green check mark. Go to your recording. And it says voice meter output. This is what you're getting you're using is your microphone right here, voice meter output VAO. Okay? So that's why you want to have that set up because whatever that what that setting means is that the system sees the B output as this. Whatever goes into this, and you can see the meter is running, is what goes out the uh, general output. But we're being very specific actually, so this isn't as important because we specifically selected from the list. Okay? And that's the way. If you had just set default device, then this would be important that it be selected as default device, a little more important. But since Skype and Hangouts on Air let you select specific devices, uh, this isn't as important as it normally would be if you were, if you didn't have an, a, a drop-down list like this, if you only had the choice of default. But with Skype we have that option as well as with the other. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and make a call. I'm going to go up here and get this out. Let's see. Go to my contacts. Okay, so if you go to your contacts, Skype contacts, and type echo in the search box, you'll see this echo sound test service. Okay, just select that and it'll come up. So let's go ahead and uh, give that a call and see if we hear everything. Hello, welcome to Skype call testing service. After the beep, please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Well, we're testing now. Well, we're testing now. If you are able to hear your own voice, oh, yes. then you have configured Skype correctly. If you hear this message, but not your own voice, then something is wrong with your audio recording settings. Please check your microphone and microphone settings or visit skype.com for more help. Thank you for using the Skype call testing service. Yeah, you have it. So that's how you verify that your setup's okay. All right. Well, we've pretty much covered the basis of how to get these things set up to work. Just as a quick review, we're, we've set up uh, these sounds so that aux vio is uh, the speakers and that's this run right here aux bio and the microphone is the b which is this one right here you could even call this uh, under recording to remind yourself you could call it voice meter b1 output okay which remind yourself you could call this one aux v2 okay and then you remember in the future which was the recordings whether you use them or not at least they'll be named that way okay so now let's do a quick covering of the uh, of how to set up and hang out on air because the audio is much much better I don't know if you really could tell uh, how much better <laughs> I'm not recording, but this Skype is pretty ru rusty sounding when you're actually playing music. So let's really quickly uh, bring up Internet Explorer, and I'll show you how to set up a Hangout on Air. You uh, open up your YouTube channel. Let's get a little water here. Dry as can be here. Okay. So click on your icon up in the upper right hand corner and select Creator Studio. And this will load in. And then click on the left, click on Live Streaming. And then 
in that, click on Events, not Stream Now. You want Events. And you see, here's a Google Hangouts on Air stream that I'd already created. And I can rejoin any time because I never actually used it to broadcast, so I never hit the Stop Broadcast button. So as long as you don't hit the Stop Broadcast button, this stays there forever. But we're going to first create a new live event so you can see how that's set up. So here on the right side, click on New Live Event. Give it a name. And you can say today, now, or you can set it for a day in the future, um, and a time in the future. Great way to schedule classes, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to make this private or optionally on list only you can view um, privates now on listed is probably a better option so that you can if you do record it you can share this with your uh, students and they can watch the lesson and we're going to use right here quick using Google Hangouts on air okay now uh, there's really no advanced settings you have to worry about you could because you're going to keep it on listed it won't won't be findable in the search. It's only people that have the URL will be able to find this. So at that point, you're ready to go. Just click on Go Live Now. And we're not really going to go live now. We're just going to set it up. So this shows up. This is my lovely old picture. And you see it kind of sets things up. There's a little timer here. And these controls appear. You want to click on the gear at the top here. There's no camera because I'm not using one. And here is where a default setup. Again, we can choose our microphone. Okay. And we're using the, but look at the labeling. Voice meter B1 output. So we're going to use that as our output. And our speakers we're going to set as the voice meter VAIO aux so there it is the aux because remember we put we're using the aux side for the uh, Skype and the Hangouts return sound because that's set up to not return itself back to the uh, caller and you can play a test sound and obviously it's going to work but here's the real secret sauce for all this voice here is a similar codec to what the Skype is using and it's really horrible for music content but it is fantastic in studio mode okay studio mode is what prefers to have a minus 12 DB peak if you go over that, it starts to distort a little bit, feel, sound a little squashed. It doesn't compress a bit and distort even. But so keep it at that minus 12 and you're good. Okay, so here we have that. And again, we want to set up voice meter since we're doing this. I'm going to set it up so that our B1 output, right click and type in minus 12. And now our peaks, we don't have to worry about them going over minus 12. We're good to go. Now notice up here it says off air. We are not broadcasting and we're not recording and we're not creating a video. It's still off air. To start a video, you would have to hit the start broadcast button. So you can do that. However, if you never really want to record your videos and you just want to use this similar to Skype uh, to contact your students then you would simply leave that button alone and you would copy this link up here copy that and save it in notepad somewhere so we'll go ahead and get notepad here we are we'll save that URL because we can send this URL to anybody who we want to join this Hangout with us. So we'll go ahead and say uh, Piano Lessons. 
URL and save it right to my desktop. There we go. Okay, so this is what you would then copy and paste into an email that you send to your students. And you would send them that link and they'd be able to come in here and come right back in to the Hangout, okay, just by pasting it in their browser. So to prove that to ourselves, we'll hit that. But before I do, down here in the bottom, if you do decide to record, down here on the bottom you see a links button. Click on that and it shows the link of where the video will be in the future. Okay, so if you do record, this is where the video will be. And there's also a YouTube embed code already created for you to embed it into a browser, I mean a, a web page. So you could have a special web page created like in WordPress or something that's private only to your students where you can keep the recordings of their videos so they can see past videos right there. It's an option, it's not required. Again, you can use this just like Skype and never record. So let's go ahead, we copy that URL, the URL from up top here and we'll just close this down. Hit the red phone and it shuts it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open a new page here. As if we were the student and paste this in. And, uh, oh, it's not working. Oh, this might be, this might be something that, uh, I pasted it in twice. Oops. Come on. There we go. I believe I might have. Here we go. Yes, I double hit the control V button. So it has this comes up. Sometimes you have to click it. You have to agree to the okay, I got it. You click you know, did you read the information, you know, by the rules. Click that, and bingo, now you're in. And then you hit join, and you, were, you joined the Hangout, or your student has joined the Hangout. Same settings are here. You can have them make sure that they've got their setup going on and that they're not using voice. You have to switch to studio every time you use this. So switch to studio save and then if you want to start the broadcast you can but as soon as they show up you can both talk to each other and a a regular hangout type of thing happens except it has the option of that studio setting which hangouts regular hangouts do not have this option only hangouts on air have this option so that's why I'm bothering to show you all of this okay so there you have it the other place that you can find this, and you hang up, again, this, this URL is going to stay there as long as you don't start the broadcast and start it again. Another place you can see it is, you see, I saved this as piano lessons. So I could come back to my live streaming events, and it shows up in the list, and I just say, start hanging out on air to get myself in, or I can t paste in that link, okay? And... So let's leave. This will stay there until you actually start a broadcast and then stop the broadcast. This link will remain valid. If you uh, start a Hangout and you get the broadcast going, <coughs> oh, try it again. <coughs> there we go. Abide by the rules, join. Okay, so if you start a broadcast and you're recording and you click the phone and forget to stop the recording, it will continue recording for, I believe it's four hours, and then turn itself off. Okay? So uh, that's just one other thing to keep in mind that once you start the broadcast, stop it or it'll record an extra four hours of space and you'll have to edit the darn thing. 
As soon as you hit start broadcast, it will do some thinking, and then the on the air, on air light will light up here, and will light up up here, and you'll be on the air, and you'll be recording the lesson. So they'll be able to see everything, they'll be able to see and hear everything that you've done. You can put it, you can use a webcam and show your piano if you want. You could both do that because this is quite versatile. It lets you add the webcam. Of course, if there's you know camera found, and set up your voice. Both sides have these options. Okay, to do the setup. Okay, so I think that's uh, that's covered all the things that I needed to show you to be able to get this to work. If you ever have some of these that uh, you don't use you can delete them by click checking it there and going to actions delete now you can't do that with a uh, the stream now type you actually have to do a stream and record something before you'll be able to delete it from the list here but we're not using that just using events so events are erasable plus you can go into edit you can change dates you can uh, I think there's, there's ways of sending yourself reminders and all kinds of things. Now let's say I set it for tomorrow and save changes and let's see I go to advanced settings and back. Oh, I saw a uh, where it offered to give me a reminder one one time. I don't remember where it was. Let's see. And also notice there's a thing called a live control room. I should mention that. Live control room lets you actually look at the stream in the preview mode before anything has happened. Now, I don't have a camera, so you're not going to see anything. But you would be able to hear it. Then once you're recording, once you're actually broadcasting, when you start at broadcast, then this public view of the recording begins. But if you want to check your camera and make sure everything's working to YouTube, you can do that here. Okay? So, uh, I don't know why it's giving us a complaint. Probably because, oh, well, I know why. It's because I don't have a camera set up. <laughs> so, but that's what the um, so-called live control room does for you. Once you have this set up, you'll have, be able to go test your settings and everything. Yeah, by looking at them in a live streaming video that's not recording, but it is streaming and showing you what's happening. Okay, well, I think that's gone on long enough. Um, let's go ahead out of here. Here we are. Close that down. And uh, if you have any questions, as usual, if I see a comment come into my comments box, I answer it typically the same day or by the next day. So, uh, so f really, if you have any questions at all, go right ahead and ask them. And uh, like I said, I'm going to upload a file that has this setup minus these A2 things, which I only needed for this recording. But uh, the, the exact setup with the names and everything, um, I'm going to put, ha put that on my regular terrybritton.com server and make that available to anybody who needs it who wants to load the settings you do that by going to load settings here and it will be called piano lessons video and just load it in and bingo you'll be good to go okay all right well thanks a lot for spending all this time with me and i uh, hope it really was informative and got you moving to where you can have a two-way conversation with music using a host and the fantastic voice meter mixer and either Skype or a Hangout on Air. Okay, so that's that. Have fun, uh, have fun giving good lessons. Bye-bye.